Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In today's video, we'll be installing our roof rack on this 2006 Toyota 4Runner. To start out, we need to do a little bit of disassembly here on the vehicle, specifically getting the factory roof rails and rack assembly removed. For that, you'll start by removing these plastic trim caps. There's gonna be one at each corner. These come off by simply sliding a pry tool under this edge. You've got four locking tabs, two per side, that you're trying to release. So simply getting that in there and working your way back along the edge, you should be able to get both of those to pop free. And then typically you can kind of just push this over to the other side while you lift up a little bit. You may have to also slide this tool around this side to help you out. And then these will simply be discarded so you don't have to worry too much about whether or not you damage these along the way. With the caps out of the way, you can grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts at each corner. After you have those removed at all four corners, it's just a matter of lifting up on this to kind of break the seal that's built up there over time. And then you can grab a friend to help you lift this off of the roof of the vehicle. Now with the roof rack out of the way, you'll want to take this opportunity to clean up this factory roof. You can go ahead and clean the whole thing because this is the best access you're going to have to it for a while, but specifically each of these mounting locations where the dirt has built up over time. With everything cleaned up up there on the roof of the vehicle, you can come down and assemble your actual rack. For this one, we kind of already assembled everything to speed things up, but just to give you a quick rundown here, you'll use the quarter 20 button head hardware in your bolt pack. You wanna make sure to install washers on each of these bolts. And then specifically on the fairings out on the end, you'll have serrated flange locking nuts to go on the inside, whereas the bolts will just thread directly into all seven crossbars running along here. Now we did leave the front crossbar out at this time as that's gonna share a mounting slot with the outer trim plates that we're gonna install in just a moment. Specifically, to talk about those crossbars, they are gonna have a machine slot in here. That is for all your accessory mounting hardware. So generally, we make sure those are facing up and typically all the way to one side, we usually choose the driver just for some symmetry there. So obviously, that was a pretty quick rundown of how this thing gets put together, but go ahead and check out our Fit Gen 4Runner Roof Rack Assembly video for a more detailed look at how to get this assembled. So with that being said, you can now grab the outer accent trim plates and begin installing those to the roof rack side rails here. So basically you're just gonna lay it down on the side rail and we're gonna begin by installing this using a couple sets of the mounting holes here that are not used in this specific fourth gen application. So specifically the fourth gen is gonna use the forwardmost and rearmost set of mounting holes on this rack leaving us both of these sets to get this started to kind of hold it in place for now. Now again, this is gonna use quarter 20 button head hardware, much like you assembled the rack with to this point. So we'll drop the bolts and washers in through here and install the nuts on the back side. Now with our trim plate, properly located, we were able to install the mounting hardware here for this front crossbar, along with the remaining mounting bolts along the side rail. Now, if you already have one of our roof racks previously installed and are buying these as an add-on, you are gonna have a few of these holes, specifically like this one here, and a couple more along the side rail that are gonna need to be drilled. Again, you can just lay out the trim plate in the same method as we have, and then use it as a guide to mark and drill those remaining holes. With the accent panels installed, we can now move on to installing our mounts. First, you're gonna to need to identify which ones are front versus rear, which is gonna be pretty easy using the last digit in the part number that's cut out here in the bottom of the mounts. There's gonna be an F in this one identifying front, leaving this one to be the rear with an R. So we'll start off with our front mount up here. All of the mounts are gonna install in a very similar fashion. They're gonna basically step down and in if you're viewing this as it would be installed on the vehicle. So they're gonna to install to the inside of the side rail here and then use that same quarter 20 button head 
bolt and washer with a nut on this back side. Now we are going to leave that just a little bit loose so we have our vertical adjustability here as we're getting it installed on the vehicle. And then I will also point out that these are not side specific so once you find a front, it's a front, doesn't matter if it's on this side or the passenger side. Now our front mount installed using the forwardmost set of holes here on the side rail. The rear mount is going to install using the rearmost set. I don't believe I mentioned it on the front mounts, but you're going to be using the vertically slotted holes to bolt to the side rail, leaving the round holes here to bolt to the roof. And then again, slide that inside of the rail, button head bolt and nut in the back. So obviously you just saw me place the mounts on the rack here. You could also simply install all four mounts on the roof of the vehicle loosely and then lift the rack into place. How you do that's kind of up to you. We're gonna to choose to go that route mainly so that I can show you how these get mounted to the roof and sealed into place without having the rack in the way. Now here we're working on the driver's side rear corner just to give you a frame of reference. We've got a rear mount along with the mounting hardware, which is gonna be the M8 button head hardware in your bolt pack along with washers for each of these. You're gonna need two per bracket. And then you're gonna also want some ultra black RTV silicone sealant. With this, we're gonna be kind of just putting it around each of these little standoffs here around the factory holes before installing the mount down in place. And this is gonna dry up eventually, so you've gotta kind of work relatively quickly once you get to this step so that you can get all four mounts in place. Still have a little bit of flexibility in this RTV while you're getting everything adjusted and tightened down. So with that being said, I'm just gonna take this and run an ice bead around each of these. You wanna be kinda generous here because this is obviously what's gonna seal the weather out of the vehicle, but not use so much that it's just gonna make a huge mess when you get the mount installed. So as a reference there, I kind of just built that up about as tall as the standoffs, and then you can place the mount down around those. And then once you have that lined up, I'm just gonna take a little bit more, put it in each of those holes so that we know the bolt has to pass through some sealant as it goes into place, and leave just a little bit up on this edge so the washer has something to compress against as well and create a nice seal here. So you'll repeat that process on all four mounting locations and then can simply lift the rack into place. Or again, if you already have your mounts bolted onto the rack, you'll just wanna place the RTV around each of these little standoffs before you lift the whole assembly up here on the roof and then come back and put just a little bit in before each bolt. Once you have all that set up, you will use a five millimeter hex driver or Allen wrench to tighten those in place. Now that we have all four mounts in place, I can grab a friend to help me lift the rack up onto the vehicle. With the rack in place up here on the roof, it's just gonna be a matter of sliding it front to back as needed to get these holes lined up with the slots in your mounts and then installing additional quarter 20 button head bolts with flange locking nuts into each of those locations. Once you have the hardware started in all four mounting locations, you can go ahead and adjust the height of your side rails. So you've got vertical slots in all of these mounts. It's just gonna be a matter of taking a step back, looking at the profile of the rack side rails here against the roof and getting this nice and level as needed. If you had your fairings snugged up at any point during this install already, you may have to loosen those to make sure you're getting full range of adjustment here. And then once you've got this sitting nice and parallel, go ahead and use your 5.30 seconds hex to tighten it up. After you've adjusted the side rail height on both sides and you're happy with all that, we can move on to both the front and rear fairings. Now for those, first of all, you wanna make sure that you have the provided edge lock trim in place here. We didn't fully go over that in the beginning of this video as we referenced you to our Fit Gen 4 Runner install. But if you haven't checked that out, basically you're just cutting this to length, making sure you have it just past each of the points on the fairing and that it's in place 
anywhere that the fairing would contact the roof of the vehicle here on the front. And then in the rear, you're gonna use the remaining section. You'll cut that into two smaller pieces and just make sure it's covering out here on the pointed areas. Once you've done that, we are gonna recommend installing 3M paint protection film between the fairing, specifically this edge lock trim, and the painted roof surface. So the way we do that is I will kind of set the fairing itself where it would be for the final install. Basically, we're just applying kind of moderate pressure here, also making sure it's even from side to side. And then I'm just gonna lightly kind of snug this into place and hold it for now. And then with that secured, I'll grab just some blue masking tape and I'm gonna run this along the front edge here about a quarter to three eighths of an inch in front of the edge trim and that is just gonna be my guide for when I'm putting down the film. So we'll have just a little bit out in front of that but not so much that it's largely visible in front of the rack. After you have your kind of guideline there marked out, you will need to remove the front two bolts on each side of the fairing or you can remove the whole thing, that's really up to you but taking those front two out should allow you to just flip that back out of the way and get that paint film installed. Now you will want to prep the surface before you lay down that film, just so that it's gonna adhere properly. Specifically, I'm spraying just isopropyl alcohol here. You could easily use a wax and grease remover or something like that as well. And we're just gonna clean this off all the way along this surface. Once everything's prepped, you can just cut a strip of your film to length and again, using your tape as a guide and some sort of vinyl type applicator, get this pressed down on here. With the paint film in place, you can simply flip the fairing back over reinstall the hardware on both sides, and then it's just a matter of getting this pressed down to the right height, making sure there's tension on there all the way across so that it's not gonna move or rattle going down the road. And then again, with your 530 seconds, you can begin to tighten these up. After that, you can repeat that same process to get that rear fairing set with the only real difference being that you can use a couple smaller sections under each piece of that edge lock trim. Once you've got both fairings adjusted, go ahead and run back through, make sure all your hardware is tight just to be safe, and then your install is complete. Now, if you guys have any questions at all about this roof rack install or anything else we offer here at Victory 4x4, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or just give us a call at 269-459-8447.